If you're watching this video right now, chances are you've played Minecraft at least once in your life. If you have, whether you realize it or not, you have actually agreed to a set of rules created by the developers, and breaking these rules could lead to different punishments, such as having your server blacklisted or even getting taken to court. And considering Minecraft is owned by Microsoft, good luck winning that case. But the rules are called the EULA, or the End User License Agreement, and this set of rules has a history of controversy in the Minecraft community, as people were making real-world money off of the game in ways the developers never intended. So what does this have to do with the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft? Well, recently I was doing some research and I ended up reading the EULA, and after going through it, I believe that some members of the 2B2T community might be breaking it, whether they realize it or not. And it all comes down to making real-world money off of in-game items. Today's video is a mix of events and controversy both in-game and in the real world. I love making content like this, and if you enjoy it as well, make sure to subscribe. We have so much to cover today, so let's get started. In the early days of the game, when the EULA was first drafted, it said that you were not allowed to make money off of anything that belongs to Mojang. In-game blocks and items fall under this umbrella, so if you were a server owner, or even just a player, you couldn't sell items in-game for real-world money. At least that's what the rules said. Well, you know people, they don't always read the rules. Most players just skipped over it when they started playing Minecraft, so from 2010 to 2014, servers began to pop up charging players real-world money for in-game items, and they were able to operate with no problem. Mojang didn't even really take action despite the rules being broken. Running a Minecraft server became a legitimate business, with people leaving their jobs and schooling just to open a server. It was that lucrative. Unfortunately, this is also the era where pump and dump Minecraft servers were at their peak, a dirty name for a dirty practice. Basically, a few developers would get together to create a short-term Minecraft server. They would pay small to mid-sized YouTubers to advertise their server and have a grand opening. During the first few weeks of operation, players would be coming in, purchasing ranks, in-game items, etc., and the owners would make bank. Then after a few months when the server's player count would drop, they would shut down the server. And during the downtime, the devs would reuse all of their plugins, change the server's lobby and world file, and would then reopen the server under a new name, repeating the entire process. It was bad. This is also when the controversial YouTuber practice of double dipping started, where a YouTuber would either own or be part owner of a Minecraft server, play on the server themselves and create content on it, and then reap the rewards of both monetization on their videos and the revenue coming from the server. You'd be surprised at the amount of YouTubers who have done this. There's nothing wrong with this practice per se, but if YouTubers don't disclose that they own or have part ownership of the server, it is a bit dishonest. But regardless, Mojang didn't like server owners making large sums of money by selling in-game items, especially if players could obtain a legitimate advantage by paying money. It also became a problem that the developers would get emails and tweets from angry parents claiming they wanted refunds from their child purchasing hundreds of dollars worth of ranks and items from servers, despite the developers having nothing to do with them. The team decided that it was time to start enforcing their rules, handing out punishments, and potentially pursuing legal action. On June 12, 2014, Mojang's Director of Communications, Owen Jones, posted a now infamous blog post stating what servers and players were allowed to do and what they weren't. They made it clear that making money off of what they made was not okay, with the only exception being Minecraft videos made by YouTubers. Cosmetics were okay to sell on servers, but selling Minecraft items, in-game currencies, or anything that gave players an advantage were now punishable. Pay-to-win server owners began to panic. Their primary money-making method was now obsolete, and they had to scramble to figure out ways to stay monetized while also following the new rules. 
These changes ended up being the demise of several larger servers, and the EULA enforcement caused controversy in the Minecraft community, effectively tearing the multiplayer culture in half. Any server that refused to follow the EULA would be blacklisted, meaning that their servers could not be joined using the latest vanilla Minecraft client. Servers either stayed in the older versions of Minecraft, or could update and follow the rules. One of my favorite PvP servers from back in the day, MCPvP, was a victim of these rule changes, and could no longer operate the same way due to the EULA enforcement. Eventually, the server would be sold and merged with a different server. So now that you know why the EULA was such a big deal in Minecraft's history, what does it have to do with 2B2T, the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft? Well, it involves these. Shulker boxes filled with items. Despite the server being started in 2010, having no rules and having the reputation as the most toxic server in Minecraft, it actually has never violated the EULA and ran solely on player donations, so it was able to avoid the controversy that the greater Minecraft community was facing. In 2016, when 2B2T started to become popular, players wanted to log in and experience the server and its history for themselves. The only problem? They didn't have gear. Well, when a major duplication glitch was discovered on the server in November of 2016, the now infamous 11.11 dupe, or drop dupe, some players had dollar signs in their eyes. They realized that they could dupe large amounts of valuable gear, stuff them into shulker boxes, and then sell them to new players with real-world money via PayPal. The first traders to do this were able to make thousands of dollars, even setting up trading discords to make it easier to get in touch with potential clients. More and more traders popped up to the point where the server's economy underwent massive inflation over a few years. Shulker boxes that originally sold for $10 were now trading for pennies. I'm sure you've probably put two and two together at this point. If we take the EULA at face value, it would seem that 2B2T traders have been violating the EULA by selling shulkers for real-world money. Even though they may have created the items inside the shulkers, those items are technically Mojang's property, and they cannot be sold for real-world money. I'd like to reiterate that 2B2T itself is not breaking any of the rules, it's just these traders trying to make a quick buck. Plus, many of them are young, so making $100 off of Minecraft items as a teenager is probably more lucrative than mowing lawns. Now, the question is, would Mojang actually go after any of these individual players? Well, I don't think so. Outside of server owners, EULA enforcement doesn't seem to happen to individual players, so nothing is likely to happen to these rule breakers. It's also interesting to note that, going off the same interpretation of the EULA, selling modified illegal items such as 32k sharpness swords is technically allowed because the items have been modified from their vanilla state. It just gets super bizarre the more you think about it. So to answer the question that this video posed, based on what I've read and interpreted, I would say that yes, some of the 2B2T players have violated the EULA. But here's what I want you to do right now. Below, in my comments section, I want you to tell me whether you agree with me or disagree with me. Leave a comment saying either agree or disagree, and a reason why. Because perhaps your interpretation of the EULA is different than mine. Maybe there's something that you know that I don't. But before we go, the one thing 2B2T has taught me over the years is that it's important to stay safe online and protect yourself. One easy way to do it is to use Dashlane. They make it easy to manage everything. They autofill all your personal info like addresses, credit cards, passwords. They also have a VPN so you won't be tracked when you're browsing the internet and can access content in any country. They generate super secure passwords plus all the passwords that you do store with them are encrypted, making a password manager the safest place to store your info. The best part is, it's free to download and install on your first device. To get started, click the link in the description to go to dashlane.com fitmc. And thank you to Dashlane for sponsoring today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to subscribe. 
Also make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated on when new content is coming out. That's it for today, everyone. Take it easy and stay alive out there, FitFam. Thank you.